Hello everyone and welcome back to my Let's Play on Formula 1 97! Yes, we're back and today this is round 11 of the Championship and we are at Hungary. Yes, and with our driver of choice, Mr. Gabriel Tarquini, as the five lights go out now for the qualifying session. Yes, this is the track that the hookster absolutely hates, but thankfully he's not driving today. No, it's our driver of choice, Mr. Gabriel Tarquini, and of course the Jordan Peugeot. Yes, so let's see what fantastic qualifying time he can put in now as he starts his run at Hungary. As you have to break very, very hard into turn one, very, very hard indeed. Now I've had to look at the corner names, and unfortunately the Hungar circuit in 1997 at least, there are no actual corner names, no. A little few facts for you about the circuit. Uh, in 1997, of course, uh, the race was run on August the 10th and the circuit length was 2.465 miles. The race length for, for the full Grand Prix was 77 laps. And in 1996, uh, which of course all the statistics are based on in this little uh, pamphlet you get with F197, uh, the pole position went to Michael Schumacher with 1 minute 17 seconds. The winner was Jack Villeneuve and his total time was 1 hour and 46 minutes and 21 seconds and the fastest lap went to Damon Hill with a 1 minute 20.093 of course that's for the race yes that's right everyone fastest lap went to Damon Hill because if anyone who remembers F197 in um, 97 they will know of course that Damon Hill came this close I mean this close to winning this race at the Hungara Ring yes this close he almost bloody did it but he didn't, unfortunately, because he had some kind of throttle failure, I think, with his car. And, of course, the car he was driving in 1997 was the Arrows Yamaha. As Gabriel Tarquini goes into pole position at the moment, yes, the Arrows Yamaha. That's right, after being unceremoniously sacked from Williams the year before. In fact, a lot of people said it was actually two years before when he was actually sacked, but it took a long time because he was fighting for a championship for it actually come into effect. He ended up um, at... Arrows. Yes, Arrows. That was his team of choice for 1997. In fact, it wasn't really. It was basically because all the other teams had signed their drivers and there really wasn't any room left. So, uh, and it was a very, very late decision to actually get rid of Damon. I think it was, uh, or actually, a decision that was actually broadcast to tell everyone, as I say, the uh, behind the scenes gossip was that Frank Williams got rid of Damon Hill way, way early into the 1996 season. But it wasn't announced until very, very late into the season. Of course, they didn't want to impact on Damon Hill trying to win the World Championship in 1996, which is very, very sneaky from Williams there. So they tried to hold it off as long as they could. But yes, he was sacked. He was absolutely sacked at the end of 96 and ended up in 97 in an Arrows car. And he almost won the bloody race. As we just about to watch Gabriel Tarquini across the line once again for his qualifying. It's only second place at the moment. Wowzers. But it looks like Gabriel Tarquini may not be as good as this track as the Hookster is, I uh, have to say, which is a real shame. But anyway, yes, so that was the situation. But Damon Hill put in a fantastic performance at the Hungara Ring and almost won this race. But unfortunately, as I said, I think he had some sort of throttle problem and Jack Vilner went past him and won the race. I think he still finished in second, did he? Was it second place? I think it was anyway. And oh my goodness. As Murray would say, my heart was in my mouth. Yes, because if anyone knows, I'm a Damon Hill diehard fan. Well, I was anyway, but <laughs> yes, at the time. But of course, anyone who's English is a diehard fan of anyone who's doing quite well. <laughs> yes, we're not fussy. <laughs> and yes, so it was absolutely glorious that he almost won that race. But when that throttle started to fan and you could tell that the lap times were just falling off, absolutely falling off. Oh, Damon Hill fans all over the uh, world went, no! Yes, they did that... Um, that Star Trek meme, you know, the one with Darth Vader where he goes, no, that's what they were doing all over the world when his throttle failed and he ended up not winning the race, which would have been Arrow's first and only win, I do believe, of the championship. Bugger, absolute bugger. Anyway, we come in from fifth position at the moment on the slick tyres and let's fast forward as we always do through the qualifying session, the first 15 minutes of it anyway, and see exactly what everyone's doing. So Hulkenberg is currently in the lead with a 111. Hill Race Driver's in second place in the McLaren with a 111 as well. Hamilton is in third. He's in the Tyrrell. Oh, Raikkonen's gone into the lead now. Raikkonen has gone into the lead. Of course, he's in a Sauber. Wow, that's a fantastic performance from Kimi Raikkonen there. A 110. Of course, don't forget, the uh, engine horsepower is not really an advantage to you at this circuit because it's tight and twisty. So some of the lower teams can get quite good. And so Roman Grosjean's now gone into the lead. Wowzers. And Tolunga Lila. Tolunga Lila is in third position. And Carmen Jordan goes into sixth place. Albon in ninth. Gabriel Tarquin at the moment is in tenth position. Yes, tenth position. 
Oh my goodness. It's all looking very, very exciting. I'm sure someone's going to topple Grosjean, surely, surely. And as you can see now, we've accelerated forward now to the last 30 seconds of the qualifying session. And unfortunately, it started to rain, so we couldn't go out again for another run. And we're in 21st position. Yes, 21st place for Gabriel Tarquini. Uh, Charles Leclerc, though, in the Ferrari, is also just ahead of us in 20th place. I don't know what's happened to him. Maybe he didn't manage to get out for another run either. And uh, Verstappen is currently in 22nd place. But on pole is George Russell, of course, in the Williams with a 110.559. Robert Kubica, his teammate, of course, is in second position. Uh, Gio Venazzi is in third place. Roman Glojon is in fourth. Kimi Raikkonen in fifth. And Kevin Magnussen is in sixth position. Wowzers. Absolute Wowzers. So let's have a look at the final grid placings then. So there they are. You can see that George Russell is in the lead, Rob Kubica in second place, and Gabriel Tarquini on the tight and twisty circuit of Hungary is in 21st position. Okay, it's time to go over now to the legendary Mr. Murray Walker. Welcome to the Hungarian Grand Prix here at the Hungaro Ring in Budapest. This 2.5 mile circuit close to the beautiful and historic city of Budapest is one of the tightest in the championship. Teams have to set their cars up for very high downforce to get grip on its bends. Even so, the drivers have to be right at their best to avoid sliding out of the race. Good grid positions are absolutely essential because passing is almost impossible. Thank you, Maui. Oh dear, Parson is almost impossible and we're in 21st position. OK, then, once again, it's time for the five notes to go out on the F197 Championship season. And we say, go, 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 and it's away he goes. He's got to be very, very careful here, very, very careful, because the cars in front are going to slow down. Hold me, look at the Ferrari, look at the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc. He slowed down as well. Well, he's done a sensible thing and actually backed off from that. And he's now in last place, but now he's got a good chance of catching up to the cars in front without, of course, losing his front wing, which he would have done if he did just stall into that turn because all the other cars in front as you can see slowed down horribly there absolutely slowed down horribly so anyway Gabriel Tarquini last position at the moment on the first lap of the Grand Prix now what is his strategy going to be well I think he's probably going to go for a two stop I'm not quite sure to try and get him a little bit further up the grid but maybe he's gone for a one stop to try and get that advantage of the extra stop that the other teams are going to make and hopefully get him up high up the grid that way well we'll find out as this race unfolds so there you go 1.996 seconds behind Charles Leclerc now for Gabriel Tarquini in of course the gorgeous the gorgeous livery of the Jordan Peugeot in 1997 and I've been watching some of the old races again and Jordan did very very well in 97 I have to admit with uh, Giancarlo Fisichella don't forget yes as well as Ralph Schumacher Giancarlo Fisichella uh, did some very very good races uh, well early on anyway I haven't quite got to the end yet so we'll find out what actually happens towards the end of the season but at the start of the season Giancarlo Fisichella did very very well indeed and he was hotly tipped to be the new sensation in Formula 1 well according to most of the commentators anyway. So this is the end of lap one of the Grand Prix at Hungary. Yes, already we've done the first lap because it's tight and twisty and it's a very, very short circuit, of course. As I said earlier, it's only 2.46. Oh, Jesus Christ, look at that. What happened there? I don't know. Car slowed down, though. Car slowed down. He's up at 21st now for Gabriel Tarquini, 21st place. And we've got a McLaren in front of us now. What is that doing so far down the grid? I don't know. Perhaps he's had a coming together with some of the other cars in front as well. Maybe he's got a busted wing. I don't know. But there is a McLaren in front of us, everyone. The McLaren in front of us. You can't actually see it because they're just a load of black blobs. But we're going to catch up to them, hopefully. We're now 12 seconds behind the leader, which is Robert Kubica in the Williams. So he's got past George Russell. He's got past George Russell for the lead as Robert Kubica. Fantastic for Robert. But can we make any inroads into these cars in front? Of course, this to us is just traffic. It's just traffic that's in the way. And we've got to see if we can get past them. But we, we just can't at the moment because we can't actually catch up to the back of them. So I'm pretty sure that Gabriel Tarquini at this point in the Grand Prix has gone for a one stop. Because his car seems to be very, very heavy. Because he's making no inroads into these cars in front. Which he should have done by now, I think. Yes, he should have done. So I think he may be going for a one stop. Which should be good for maybe a few championship points at the end. Maybe. Anyway, end of lap two now. Kubica in the lead. Giovinazzi in second place. Kimi Räikkönen in third position. And we've crossed the line to start lap three. Still in 21st at the moment. Yes, 21st. As he breaks very, very hard in this very, very tight turn one. Very, very tight indeed. You have to really go out into the apex to get that car around. But he's okay. He's okay. And he's catching Carlos Sainz now. Carlos Sainz 
is the next car in front and he's two and a half seconds ahead of Gabriel Tarquini as the sunlight dapples onto our beautiful Jordan car. Yes, look at it. The sunlight just dapples onto it. And we're still chasing the cars in front. Well, we've got a trolley train in front now. There's a line of three cars because, as everyone knows, in this game, they do tend to stick into a sort of train uh, on the racing line and don't seem to deviate very much from it. But we are slowly catching this McLaren. I do believe it still is a McLaren. Yes, and I've still no idea why they're that far down the grid. But anyway, no matter. We're still chasing the cars in front. But we're only in 21st position. Yes, 21st place. As we go underneath the Shell Formula One side. And so Kubica stood in the lead. Giovinazzi in second. George Russell was dropped down to third. Raikkonen in fourth. Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari is in fifth place. And Roman Grosjean is in sixth position. Fantastic performance from Roman Grosjean at the moment. And we're just about to start lap four now. Yes, lap four. And we still can't make... Look at this. The cars ahead, though, are swapping positions. You can just see the little black blobs are changing positions ahead. And we're now 1.4 seconds behind Carlos Sainz. Yes, 1.4 but we still can't make any inroads into the cars in front. Well, I just hope this is a one-stop. Otherwise, this is going to look pretty dicey for our driver, Mr. Gabriel Tarquini, as he once again desperately tried to catch up to these cars in front. OK, it's time for some stats, stats fans. Yes, on the Jordan Peugeot car, its chassis was called the Jordan 197. The engine was a Peugeot V2. Oh, my goodness, wait a minute, though. we got a collision. we got a car off. It's one of the two, or I do believe that was either uh, Lewis Hamilton or uh, Valtteri Bottas, I do believe. And he's got past a few cars now. We're at 18th position now. Oh, wow, that was well exciting. Just I uh, started to read something off, this, off my little pamphlet here. Uh, we had action and drama in the race oh my goodness gotta calm down i gotta calm down okay back to it we go back to it so yes the engine was the peugeot v10 its first grand prix for the jordan team was in 1991 in usa and so far in 1997 uh, they've done 103 grand prix starts and their tires were goodyear tires for their car wowzers okay that's enough of that just about to start lap five now the Grand Prix so Gabriel Tarquini has made it up into 18th position and he's chasing hard he goes into turn one once again breaks very very hard he's chasing Alexander Albon but he's now 27 seconds behind the leader which is currently Robert Kubica yes Robert Kubica in that Williams of course is currently in the lead of this race so this is lap five so just two more laps to go and the other cars should be coming in for their pit stops and hopefully Gabriel Tarquini is going to carry on and do his one stop it looks pretty much like this is what's going to happen i'm pretty sure this is a one stop i hope so anyway otherwise we are in serious trouble serious trouble as he sort of cocks up there going over the chicane a little bit there for gabriel tycrooney anyway as we go past the trees from the glorious graphical engine of this ps1 game from 1997 yes formula 197 we can tell you now that Kubica is still in the lead. Giovinazzi is in second place. George Russell in third. Kibi Raikkonen in fourth. Sebastian Vettel in fifth. And Roman Grosjean is still holding on to sixth position. So we now come through this very, very tight left-hander before we go through the final turn to start another lap. And Gabriel Tarquin at the moment is still in 18th position. Now, we're now 4.8 seconds behind Alexander Alba. Just looking to the right-hand side to see if any cars have come in for an early stop. And I can't see any cars in the pit lane. No, none at all. And we're doing all right. Uh, for the cars behind as well so now 31 seconds behind Robert Kubica 31 seconds as we're just about to start lap 6 well we just have started it in fact and we continue on in 18th position well the sun is still dappling on our car as you can see on the Jordan car and it looks like a perfect day for motor racing so it looks like it's not going to rain so we're not going to have that advantage uh, six laps into the race of the rain coming down and us managing to catch up to the cars so we have got to see if we can pull a rabbit out of our hats here and get some good points or at least some points in this race because starting from so low down the grid we are in serious trouble yes serious trouble at the moment anyway still catching we go Kubica still in the lead Russell in second Kiri Raikkonen in third Giovinazzi in fourth uh, Grosjean in fifth and Sebastian Vettel now has dropped down to six so I wonder if some of those cars have come into the pits already I'm not quite sure anyway just about to turn the corner once again these laps are just rocket ship going past aren't they because it's such a short circuit and we go past into lap seven now Alexander Albon four seconds behind we are four seconds behind just looking to the pits again anyone else come in we got a McLaren behind us. Anyone else come in? And the answer to that is no, they have. Oh, the car just come out of the pit. I do believe it. As um, Gabriel Tarquini break very, very late there into the first turn. I just saw a car come out of the pits. Uh, it was a little bit blurry, but yes, there was definitely one coming out of the pits. 
But the McLaren's gone past uh, uh, Gabriel Tarquini. The McLaren has gone past. This is disastrous. What has happened to Gabriel Tarquini? He has been passed by a McLaren, so he's now down to 19th place. Oh my goodness, I think the McLaren just called him napping there. He was a little bit unsighted from that car coming out of the pit, I do believe, with 14 laps left of this Grand Prix. So he's now down to 19th place. Kubica still in the lead, Russell in second, Raikkonen now in third, and Giovinazzi fourth, uh, yes. So I don't know quite what's happening. I think the cars must be, yes, because Roman Grosjean's now in second place. So yes, the cars are now coming into the pits as they always do on lap seven. And hopefully... Uh, Gabriel Tarquini isn't going to come in until lap 10. We bloody well hope so anyway. Otherwise, this is going to be an absolute disaster for us. Absolute disaster. 19th place on lap 7 of the Hungarian Grand Prix. And there's cars coming in. Look, there's a car coming in ahead of us. Wowzers. So hopefully we're going to make up a few positions here as we go past the pit lane. Let's have a look. There's one car coming to the pit. That was that like McLaren. There's another one just off to the right. And another one. That was a Ferrari, I do believe. So, yes, I'll be the 16th place now for Gabriel Tarquini. He hasn't come into the pits on lap eight, so yes, he's going for a one-stop. Wowzers. Whew. We can we can heave a sigh of relief then that yes, he's only doing a one-stop. That's why he's been so heavy at the start. Now, of course, he's got just two laps of fuel left in the car at the moment. So that Jordan Peugeot is going to feel like a rocket ship, an absolute rocket ship, because fuel weight is very, very accurate in this game. It's very, very accurate indeed. If you've got a fuel, full fuel tank on, you your car feels really really heavy and when you've only got a couple of laps on it feels like an absolute rocket so 16th place now still for Gabriel Tarquini on lap 8 still catching the cars in front George Russell is still in the lead Roman Glojan still in second position wowzers Hulkiberg in third now 30, 36 seconds behind George Russell 36 seconds behind George Russell for Gabriel Tarquini well it looks pretty obvious now that we're not going to win this race no we're not going to win this race but hopefully we can get some points as we're just about to cross the start finish line once again and we look to the right of the pits yes there's more cars coming in look there's quite a few now oh there's one coming out of the pits be careful be careful Gabriel oh that's a Ferrari that could be Sebastian Vettel very nearly contact there on lap nine very very nearly contact but we're okay with 12 laps remaining and now we've got Carmen Jorda in fourth position. Oh my goodness. Carmen Jorda is in fourth place. George Russell is now in the lead. Uh, Robert Kubica's down to six, so he's obviously coming for his pit stop. That's why he's dropped down. And now uh, Gabriel Tarquini is up into 12th position and still catching that Ferrari as we're about to approach half distance, which means we're going to have to come in for our stop. Yes. So this is not looking good, I don't think, for any. Are we going to get any points out of this? I'm not quite sure. Anyway, as always, we will give it our all and see what happens uh, towards the end of this Grand Prix as we're still desperately trying to catch the Ferrari. Now, of course, we are catching the Ferrari because we've basically got bugger all fuel on board. Yes, we have bingo fuel, so we are going to catch up to this Ferrari very, very quickly. But whether we're going to go for a pass, I don't know. He may just stay behind him because he's getting really close to his pit stop. Oh, I thought he was going, 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 I thought he was going to go in then, but no, no, he stays out. OK, so... Just about to start lap 10 now. Four. Gabriel Tarquini as he crosses the line. And there he is. Still 12th position at the moment. No, 10th position now. There's, there's another car coming out of the pits. That's one of the Benettons. Oh! That was dicey. That was dicey once again. George Russell is still in the lead though. Grosjean now in second place. Raikkonen in third. Robert Kubica is in fourth. And there it is. There it is. We have the low fuel warning. The low fuel warning is on. So we have got to come in for our one and only pit stop and as you can see we are catching up to that Benetton very very quickly very very quickly because there's bingo fuel in our car so we are going to catch up to him but I think he's just going to hold station because as Murray said in the intro it's almost impossible to pass at the Hungara ring almost impossible so I think we're not going to bother and we're just going to stay here and uh, wait until our pit stop and then of course we won't have the bother of trying to get past this Benetton so pretty much at half distance now it's time for us to come in for our one and only pit stop and is he going to try and get past the penalty on Gabriel Tarquini tries for a move there oh he's trying faking moves there trying to get past but no he's going to hold station because he knows he's got to come into the pit stop because he's got his low fuel warning so in we come then for our one and only stop from 10th position now for Gabriel Tarquini hopefully this is going to be a quick stop has he got any damage on the car well we'll find out any second now as we come in and no he hasn't no damage wowzers so 10 laps slick tyres and it's now time to exit our pits and we did that in 4.3 seconds wow that is very very fast indeed for Formula 197 
as you can see the stickers on the tyres to indicate that they are brand new tyres and we rejoin the race I do believe in 14th position so still way way outside the world championship points because of course the lowest points for 97 was sixth place which is one single solitary world championship point wowzers so this is now lap 11 once again the sunlight is dappling and we're trying to chase up to the cars in front of us daniel ricardo is our next target the honey badger himself of course and he is now 1.3 seconds ahead of us yes no wait, wait a minute he said it was in ninth position there uh, i do apologize yes the screen is not always accurate on the positions on the track that is not the car ahead of us that's the car in ninth place yes ninth place but there you go so we will chase hard though we are in 14th position of course we are getting ahead of ourselves so that means that if he's in ninth place and we're in 14th, there must be a huge trolley train of cars ahead, uh, just behind Daniel Ricciardo. Must be a huge trolley train if we're only one and a quarter second behind uh, ninth place. So let's see if we can catch up. Well, maybe some of the one stoppers may be coming in because occasionally a few of the cars do only stop once themselves in this game. Yes, it's very, very clever. Formula 1 like them. We come past the pit uh, lane once again and no cars have come in. So it looks like they're all going to go for two stops so after 11 laps now George Russell is still in the lead Grey Johnson in second and Carmen Jorda yes Carmen Jorda in that Prost car is now up into third position onto a podium for Carmen Jorda wowzers absolute wowzers who who would have believed it so now there is the car in front of us it's Regina Hertz the sister car in the other uh, Prost and we're now four seconds behind Regina so 12 laps completed now and George Russell is still oh yellow flag yellow flag everyone what's going on what's going on anything I can't see anything on the circuit of course there's no replays in this game no replay cameras well there is a, a kind of replay uh, system but it's very very complicated it is actually the same replay system that was in the original Formula 1 game and they just forgot to take it out basically <laughs> yes but the only way you can get the replays to work on Formula 1 97 is to start a two player game yes a two player game so you have to have the other controller all ready and, you know, inputted and ready to go. This is, of course, is being run on a PlayStation 3. So I would have had to have two controllers plugged in, which I never do because I'm a sad little geeky nerd. and only ever have one controller plugged in because it's only me that ever plays these games. Yes. <laughs> but yes, you'd have to have two controllers plugged in. And then what you have to do is you have to take your car out onto the track and then basically just park it off to the left or to the right hand side of the circuit and then you can just let the race run till the end and then you can go through the replay cameras and get all the replay views yes a little bit pointless but yes they they forgot to take it out i do believe but it isn't officially actually in there so there is no actual official way of having a replay of these races so lap 13 george russell still in the lead loman grosjean still in second position fantastic performance from him and we are still in 14th position trying to catch these cars in front but can we catch them i'm not quite sure i really don't know at this stage of the grand prix whether we are going to get anything out of this well we will get something because the cars are going to have to come in for their second stop and gabriel tarquini is going to be able to continue on so it looks like gabriel tarquini doesn't like this circuit as much as the hookster does hmm very very mysterious that very very mysterious indeed so lap 14 now lap 14 george russell still in the lead really not a lot to say at the moment because we're still chasing the cars in front and we are nowhere near them nowhere near them can't even see any black blobs in front nope so we'll have a look at the gorgeous scenery while we're waiting for the cars to catch up to each other and you can see look at look at all that oh it's just gorgeous look at the way that the trees just pop into view of course don't forget this is a ps1 game yes ps1 it is using the high resolution mode of the ps1 yes that's right everyone it had a high resolution and a low resolution mode if anyone saw the early games from ps1 like tomb raider that was in low resolution but this is in high resolution mode yes they finally got to grips with it for this game something that they didn't do for the original game unfortunately but yes they got to grips with it and now this is being shown in glorious high resolution and i, I do believe if I'm not mistaken, that that high, high resolution is 240p, yes, by 360 pixels or something like that anyway. Yes, that's the high resolution for the original PlayStation, yes. Now, of course, this is being run on a PlayStation 3 and it's being upscaled to uh, 1080p, yes, 1080p. But don't be fooled, this is not what the original game ever looked like. All you have to do is 
plug. Oh, there's a car coming out of the pits. And that was one of the um, McLarens, I do believe. So he's made it up into 12th place. We've got a yellow flag as well. I don't know what's going on here. What is going on? I don't know. Lap 15, though, for Gabriel Tarquini. And yes, as I say, all you have to do is get yourself one of those really, really big old um, box televisions. You know, the ones with the really, really fat arses on them. Yes. And then you have to uh, plug a PlayStation 1 in through the Composite connection yes that was the one that came with the place well it didn't actually come with the playstation because the one that came with the playstation was an rf connector but would you want to go that far would you well maybe you would yes so connect it with the rf connection into your television and then you will see the full glory of this game yes it, it looks like a blurry mess now it looks like a blurry bloody mess it really does and it if anyone wants to know, yeah, if you've, if you've got an old video recorder, you remember those, VHS, yeah, from your past, if you've got one of those, yeah, d dig that out of the cupboard or in the attic, go and plug that into your nice spanky new uh, HD TV or ultra high definition TV, go and do that, go and do that right now, no, no, actually wait until the video's finished, then go and do it, <laughs> but yes, go and do that, and then... Uh, if you've got any oh up into eighth place now eighth place for Gabriel Tarquini cards have come into the pits yes just two positions now outside the world championship points is he going to get a point out of this well I don't know but anyway yes plug your old video into your high def TV and if you've got any videos you know around maybe you've got some because everyone's got some haven't they really videos hiding in the garage or in the attic or down the cellar or well if they're down the cellar I'd leave them down there to be honest because they're probably rotten by now but if they're up in the loft they may be alright or if they're in the garage, they may be all right. But bring them into the inside and let them, you know, let them acclimatise first before you put them into the video. But yeah, put them in the video and then start playing a tape. And just, just, yeah, don't worry, don't worry. That, that is normal. That's, seriously, that is normal. That is how it's supposed to be. Yeah. How we forget so quickly. How we forget so quickly. Anyway, lap 16. Back to the race now. Eight position at the moment for Gabriel Tarquini. As we're just about to complete lap 16, going to lap 17. Now, are we going to get a point out of this? Are there any last stragglers coming into the pits as we go past? Well, we'll find out now. This is going to be the last opportunity for Gabriel Tarquini to get any points. And there is... There's a car! There's a car! And there's two cars! There's two cars! Oh, my goodness! Oh, wow, those is the arrows! That could be Damon Hill! Well, it would be if it, we haven't changed the drivers. But, yes, it could have been Damon Hill. And we're up into the points, everyone. Yes, sixth position. One single solitary world championship point for uh, Gabriel Tarquini oh my goodness we've done it we have done it well from the jaws of defeat we have clutched onto something it's only a little something but it's a something it's a single solitary world championship point on lap 17 we're now 22 seconds behind George Russell and of course the Williams car we're catching the car in front a little bit but I'm not quite sure if we're going to be able to catch them let's see if we can see who it is first it's just, of course, a black blob at the moment as we're desperately trying to catch up to this car. I can't see who it is. Let's see if the livery pops into view for a second and we might get a glimpse of it. It looks a little bit, I have to say, like a Prost. I'm not quite sure. It could be a Prost. It might not be. Come on, come on. OK, 17 laps anyway. George Russell's in the lead. Grodel in second. Robert Kubica now has moved up to third place, of course, in the sister Williams car. Kimi Wacker in fourth position. And we are still holding on to sixth place. Is Gabriel Tarquini as we're just about to start lap 18. Just a few more laps to go now. Any more cars in the pits? Any more cars in the pits? And the answer to that is no. So it looks like all the cars have done their pit stops. We have got a Arrows car behind us. Don't know who it is, but he's behind us, whoever he is. And we are holding on to this single solitary World Championship point. Now, of course, this is the time when you need a fuel line failure, isn't it, really? This is the time. Not when you're in first position, just about to win the race with just uh, half a lap to go. Bugger. No, this is the time, because you've only lost a point then. But are you going to get a fuel line failure? Of course you're not. Of course we're not. We're going to go all the way to the end without any failure whatsoever and only end up with a single solitary world championship point. Robert uh, Kubica is currently still in third place, I do believe. And George Russell has pulled out a little bit of a lead on us. Uh, now 25 seconds ahead of us. So he is pulling away a little bit. And we're still holding on to 6th place. Still holding on to this point. Yes, Grosjean still in 2nd. Wowzers, wowzers, wowzers. So here we go then. Just about to start lap 19. Just 2 laps left of this Grand Prix. For Gabriel Tarquini. And it looks like we are definitely going to finish in 6th place. Yes. And there we are on the board, everyone. Yes, look at that. Gabriel Tarquini. 26 seconds behind the leader, unfortunately. But we are going to end up 
with our point if the car doesn't fail which it's not going to we know it's not going to no it only fails when you're in the lead yes only fails when you're in the lead have you noticed that so Daniel Ricciardo is the car ahead of us we've just seen it now on the bottom of the screen he's three and a half seconds ahead but I think we've got no chance of catching him to be honest no chance at all and George Russell is still holding on to that lead and he's ever inching further ahead of us as you can see now 27 seconds ahead of us from 26 so he's gaining about a second a lap but of course don't forget he is in the Williams car yes which of course were the best car in 1997 so here we go then just one more lap to go well lapping a little bit lapping a little bit so we just go underneath the shell formula one sign once again Yes, we've got all the advertising holdings just as they should have been in 1997. Well, in fact, uh, there was a few extras that shouldn't have been there and that's why the game was withdrawn for quite a few weeks. But anyway, that was all sorted out and it was fine. It was fine in the end. Oh dear, we've got a low fuel warning. That's early. That's very... Well, hopefully we should be okay. Yes. In, for, in the original Formula 1 game, if you got your fuel warning, which actually you didn't ever get, you just sort of run out of fuel, uh, you're in big trouble. But in this game, it does give you a little bit of leeway. So hopefully we're going to cross the line with enough fuel in the car. Hopefully, anyway. So this is the last lap of the race. The last lap of the race. George Russell still in the lead. Now 28 seconds ahead of us. And it looks like we are going to cross the line with our single solitary one world championship point. In our glorious Jordan Peugeot car which in real life in 97 was driven of course by Ralph Schumacher who was just 21 years old yes just 21 years old okay then just a few more corners to go into this tight left hand to brake very very hard there you can see the brake discs are starting to glow a little bit for Gabriel Tarquini but it doesn't really matter because he comes around the final corner now and he's going to take take the checkered flag in sixth position with one single solitary world championship point fantastic Whew. there you go then the race has been run and this loading screen i have to say is quite possibly the longest loading screen in the history of the world ever yes and for a ps1 game which basically there's not a lot of uh, stuff to load to be honest compared to with something like gta 5 which oh my god You've got enough time to make a cup of tea by the time that uh, loads up. Yes, there's not a lot really to load up, is there? But it just takes forever. I mean, look at it. Look, he's just... Hello? Oh, here we go. Right. So after 20 laps, Gabriel Tarquini finished in sixth place and George Russell won the race in 24 minutes. Oh, my goodness. So in the championship now, we're in fourth position with 35 points. George Russell in the lead with 48 world championship points. Sebastian Vettel in second, Robert Kubica in third. Daniel Ricciardo is in sixth place. Oh, my goodness. So there we go. Our championship contention continues. And I'd just like to say thanks so much for watching, everyone. And as always, there will, of course, be more later.